Ants live in massive colonies with up to millions of members. But ever wonder what would happen if we separated an ant from its colony? Well, this week, I decided to find out. Welcome to the Ants Canada Ant Channel. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC family. Enjoy. Guys, the results of this experiment were very surprising and also quite moving. So keep on watching until the end to see what happens to an ant that is separated from its colony, as well as the big reunion afterwards. And just a heads up, grab some tissues. So the first thing that I needed to do was design this ant isolation experiment. But I wanted to make sure my methods were ethical. I didn't want this experiment to be cruel. I think the thing I was most concerned about was isolating an ant and the ant really suffering during our experiment. Feeling excessively depressed or, worst case scenario, even dying if it were separated from its colony for too long. However, for the longest time after years of ant keeping, I've wondered what would happen if an ant were separated from its colony. Perhaps getting lost sometimes happens to ants in nature. What happens to the ant then? So to be as non-cruel as possible, I set the duration of this ant isolation experiment to just 12 hours. That was plenty of time for us to see any changes in the ant after separation. I also would be providing the ant with all it needed to survive while in isolation. But before we go ahead and separate an ant from its colony, let's have a look at the ant colony from which we'll be extracting a worker. This is the Phoenix Empire, my massive pet fire ant colony. They're composed of tens of thousands of members now and are a fully functioning, well-oiled ant machine designed to hunt, collect food, build nest tunnels, and care for their queen and all the babies she amasses every day. They're always working cooperatively together. And look, how cute. They're cooperatively chewing through the connector tube in attempts to escape their setup. Welcome to the fire ant hive mind. So in this experiment, I will be taking one worker ant from this massive ant colony and isolating it into this setup I've prepared here. An AC test tube portal, complete with a test tube full of sugar water, another with fresh water behind it, and a test tube set up with red film to act as a shelter. So now guys, before we begin, what is your hypothesis? How do you think an ant will react once it's separated for 12 hours? Will it show signs of depression? Will it keep wandering the enclosure non-stop in search of its colony? Or will it remain happy, stuffing its face with sugar water and relaxing in our shelter, relieved it was now solo and free from its fascist life of slavery? Okay, maybe a bit much. But let us know your guesses in the comments, and afterward go back to your comment and let us know if you were right. Okay, so now to choose our ant. My plan was to stick a toothpick inside their territories and collect one of these curious ants climbing up it. You may be wondering why a lot of the ants seem to be covered in white stuff. Well, that's baby powder. The ants here have probably been previously preoccupied with trying to escape their setup and surpass our baby powder barrier. Well, okay. If they want to break out so badly, let's grant that wish for one of them now. I went in with a Q-tip to gather one ant and got one. This worker ant will be our test subject for this isolation experiment. I then place the ant into our isolation chamber. Done. At first it paced all around the test tube portal in search of regaining its bearings. It was in strange lands now and often stopped to clean its antennae so it had the best sense of smell possible for finding its way back home. It spent most of its time wandering the top trying to find a way out. It could probably smell its colony's pheromones nearby so it likely knew it wasn't too far from home. But now, AC family, this was the sad part. I proceeded to move the colony far away from the isolation chamber. Our ant was now officially alone. And so began our ant isolation experiment. For the first hour, the ant paced around and tried its hardest to retrace how it got in. Going back on its tracks by smell is how ants that are lost find their way back home. I'm sure this ant was so confused. I felt so bad for it already. 
It eventually found our sugar test tube, but instead of drinking from it, it chose to prioritize finding its way back home. It could always come back once it's found its homebound trail. It kept cleaning its antennae every few minutes and continued to search. I bet it was bewildered as to why it could no longer smell its colony anywhere. What amazed me was how sure the ant was that it had entered through the top port. I wondered if it was a visual memory or the smell of the top port that it remembered, or maybe both. An hour later, I caught the ant attempting to chew or dig its way out. How interesting. By the second hour, it finally rested in place to more thoroughly clean itself. Watching her self-groom, I suddenly felt compelled to give this ant a name. For me, she was special, as she would help us understand more about ants through this experiment, contribute to science, and possibly enlighten us. What should we name her, guys? Let me know in the comments. Three hours later, after tirelessly wandering the premises in vain, she stood still here in the same place. I wondered what she could be thinking right now. Could she be depressed? Scared? Confused as to how she could have lost her family and her way? That disconnect must be so tough. I felt bad, but I knew this was just for the 12 hours, and she'd already finished a quarter of the way. Over the next few hours, the ant seemed determined not to give up with the search for a way out. Stopping for naps every now and then before resuming, she would always come back here to this spot to rest. Not really interested in using our shelter. By the seventh hour, the ant lay still, hanging upside down from the roof, motionless. There was no work to be done, no babies to feed, no food to collect, no nest tunnels to excavate, no colony to protect. As a single ant, her life no longer had any meaning. She was an ant that had lost her purpose. By the eighth hour, she wandered back into the sugar test tube and finally had a drink from our sugar water. She must have been famished and so thirsty by now. With a full social stomach, she did what any ant would naturally do, which is find a way back to the colony one last time to share her goods. But again, it was no use. There was just no way out. It was getting really late, so I decided to go to bed and check up on the ant in the morning, as well as prepare for its reintroduction to the colony. At sunrise, I checked up on our fire ant. My biggest fear was that she had died. Looking around the isolation enclosure, it took me a moment to find her. She was resting in our shelter. She must have found the place overnight. She'd been through so much. But suddenly, a vibration caught her by surprise. Followed by a commotion, and then a very familiar smell. With renewed life, she ran towards the entrance, almost shouting through the glass at her fellow sister ants, who were now pouring into the isolation chamber. Before long, a fellow worker ant made first contact and seemed rather interested in her status. Perhaps she smelled different because in just the 12 hours, her colony scent must have faded a bit. She had so much to tell and a social stomach full of sugar water to share with the colony. As she stepped out into the open atrium of the test tube portal, fellow sisters came around to inspect her intrigued by what she smelled like and had to communicate to them. What surprised me most was that instead of going straight home, she proceeded to enter the sugar test tube. Not to drink, but as if to say, here guys, this is where I found the sweet stuff. She didn't drink, but decided it was now time to head back home. And before I knew it, I'd lost her in the crowd. But I knew she must have been so happy to be back. It was heartwarming to know that our aunt had fallen right back into place becoming once again a contributing member of its massive society of ants. I felt gratitude to our fire ant subject for allowing us to discover what we'd seen today. As I watched the Phoenix Empire feed together on sugar water, I began to think about us people. It seems a lot of us being isolated at home has brought on the cabin fever big time. But what's even greater than that is the fact that real life human interaction and physical contact has been reduced and many of us are now missing it. I know I am. Before the pandemic, a lot of us were going out about our day's business, absorbed on our mobiles every day on social media, often super disconnected from the physical world we lived in and were part of. But now that we've been subjected to actual physical disconnection, where our human interactions have been reduced to Zoom birthday parties and TikTok posts, I believe many of us are now realizing the value 
of being physically connected to each other in the real world. How great we had it when we could just go out and hang with our friends, talk casually with co-workers by the water station, and hug our loved ones. As the saying goes, you don't appreciate something until it's gone. Once life goes back to normal, I've decided to more greatly appreciate real life interaction in gratitude that the human species is not only smart enough to invent all these magnificent things like the internet and our mobiles that surf it, but also wise enough to realize that being physically present and around each other, being a contributing and interacting member of our global human colony is truly an awesome gift and an inescapable part of who we are. Thank you for watching and supporting the ants. It's ant love forever. AC family, did you enjoy today's episode? I truly felt bad for our isolated ant and was happy to see it rejoin the colony. So much more is ahead for the Phoenix Empire and other creatures of the ant room. So if you haven't yet, do smash that subscribe button and bell icon now and hit all so you get notified at every upload. Also, don't forget to hit the like button every single time, including now. It would really mean a lot to me, guys. Thank you. AC and our colony, I have left a hidden cookie for you here. If you would like to watch extended play footage of the worker ant during its isolation period. And guys, did you know that it's anting season in the Northern Hemisphere? And you don't even need to leave your home to start an ant colony. You can catch pregnant queen ants from the safety of your own backyard, balcony, or open window starting this month. Be sure to visit AntsCanada.com for all your ant keeping and collecting gear shipped to you in a special package from our ant loving facility in the USA. So you can get the most out of your ant keeping experience. We ship worldwide and also offer full email support if you need our help. We also have a helpful forum and ant colony trading marketplace on the site. Visit AntsCanada.com today. And now it's time for the AC question of the week. Last week we asked, which of the flavors would you choose if you were an ant? Congratulations to SBA Channel, who answered, I prefer brown sugar because it's tasty. Congratulations, SBA Channel. You just won a free ultimate ant keeping handbook from our shop. In this week's AC question of the week, we ask, what do you miss most when separated from the world and society? Leave your answer in the comment section and you could also win a free ebook handbook from our shop. Hope you can subscribe to the channel as we upload every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please remember to like, comment, share and subscribe if you enjoyed this video to help us keep making more. It's Ant Love forever. <laughs>